Today on Lockdown Red Wings, Lucas Raymond and Patrick Kane save the season for now. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a host over at the Locked On Tigers podcast and a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And uh, we're back in the wind column, Scotty. Uh, I'm God thinking bless. we're back. <laughs> we're, <laughs> just, oh my God, this team's a roller coaster. But we're back in the wind column. And uh, Lucas Raymond and Patrick Kane single-handedly trying to drag this team to the playoffs, both riding five-game point streaks or whatever it is at this point. Whew, man, was that a, a roller coaster of a hockey game. And you know what? Between this and my own men's league team, shout out, fellas, winning the semifinal 7-1. Wow, let's go. Golf claps, earned, everybody. Golf we claps. earned this victory beer. So, Golf claps for the boys. Yep. <laughs> I mean, let's just dive right into it. Two wins in three games. We're so back. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that delusional. This was a rough game at the get-go. I, yeah. I mean, they came out, and I was like, Jesus. This they barely me. beat the Columbus Blue Jackets. And we're like, we're so <laughs> back. We're like, it's not they lost were losing with 15 seconds left. They were losing. Yeah. They were going to lose this game. Like, it was, it was over. They were going to lose to the Columbus Blue Jackets. They got outplayed heavily in the first period if you do want to go chronological that was an absolutely abysmal first period i think the shot totals were like 20 to 5 20 to 5 yep um wow i'm him that was crazy um but it, i mean just an absolutely disastrous first period and whatever was said in the locker room, we got the lineup blender out there. I'm sure we'll talk plenty about that too. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, one thing in particular about that line. Just dropped an F bomb there. That was close. People playing with everybody, man. Like everybody, everybody playing, everybody playing with everybody for a little bit there. It was a uh, a wild <laughs> hockey game, but we're back. We had we had Austin Zarnick centering Patrick Kane and Alex Dabrinkit. The same Austin, Austin Zarnick who a week ago was centering Jonathan Bergeron in Grand Rapids. Yeah. And they were electric. And so, they well, were electric, <laughs> dude. Shout out Austin Zarnick. But, like, it's not lost on me, right, that this team came out flat again. And they just it, – it, and we'll probably talk about it a little bit at more length later on. But – this team is so desperate to score the first goal that they're making dumb mistakes and giving up easy chances. And you can, their goalies cannot make a save. Like James Reimer, yes, had a 916 save percentage in this game. You asked me if James Reimer had a good game. I'm sorry. And I don't want to sound like a Reimer hater because, like, did he make the bulk majority of the saves and did he face 30 plus shots in this game? Yes. But were the goals he let in, even the breakaway goals, softies? Also, yes. Like, yeah, we can't get a goalie to make a save. All up were, were avoidable, I would say. He, um, he stood in the still. same breath, how many shots did he face? He faced over 30. I think it was total. He faced 35 shots. So he had yeah, a nice okay. So percentage. contextualize, right? We just said they had 20 in the first. <laughs> so, like, and, and, you know, he played the whole game. So, obviously, the whole game is what matters. But... Um, he faced, you know, 15 shots across two periods uh, as well. And yeah, every goal he gave up was a softie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that power he got play hung goal. out to dry on two oh, of them yeah. breakaways. Like that's, you know, but he was but a to, statue on one of them. <laughs> to get frozen on a wrist shot Just and it still move. go past your glove. And then that same thing happened on the, the power play goal, right? In the third yeah. period, early on in the third period, it was a shot from the top of the circle, short side, glove side, and it just went right under his glove. And it's yeah. like, he knew he should have had it. But I mean, I guess on the flip side of it, he did enough, just enough to eke out hey, the win. I, so. At this point, I would gladly take just enough to get a win. Well, from and everybody really on this roster. <laughs> well, and that's too, like where we talk, I guess, transition now, we kind of did this backwards and talked about a notable performer first for good or bad. Reimer was on my list. We're just buzzing. The boys We're are just buzzing. buzzing. We got back in the wind column. 
back in the win column, back in the wild card as well as you, this win surpasses the Columbus Blue Jackets and with the Islanders loss separates you by three points now, I think, uh, against the Islanders yeah, going the Thursday only a game. Point still with Washington, but yeah, yeah, and they have a game in hand as well. But still, I mean, important win regardless. Like this, For this sure. win, and I, I am not kidding you. This win saves their season for now. Like if they had lost this game, the dag like th- Thursday doesn't matter in my opinion because they have already have lost the season. This is a Blue Blue Jackets team that is heavily wounded, injured throughout their lineup. And I understand that you are missing Woolman, you're missing Larkin, you Gossa Spare and Rasmussen were both under the weather. But this is a heavily banged up Blue Jackets team that's eighth in the Metropolitan, trying to win the Celebrini sweepstakes. And you came out flat against them because this team's just so desperate, giving up easy chances, and they give up the first goal and they become disheartened. And unlike those, uh, with the exception of Buffalo, unlike those other games, they scored a goal to tie it up or bring it within one. And then it got finally got some puck luck. Cause that's something we haven't talked enough about with this team is in March, they have a PDO of like 93%. Like, so not only, not only has this team been incredibly bad, they've been incredibly unlucky too. So finally they get a bounce well, with more insiders shot going off some, some guy's skate, good Branson yeah. skate to go. In the yeah. Net. And, and even, even with the, um, even with that included, right. In the third, at the end of the third, they were like they, they. It felt like they should have tied the game like six different times. Like it, it was incredible save, and then it was you know off the post on a redirect, and then it you know was uh, was uh, was a Debrinket, you know like whiff, and then there was like off the goalie skate, and it, this was all in like two minutes, like <laughs> two and a half minutes, like all of these opportunities they had to tie the game, and it just felt like oh my goodness, like the bad luck is 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 carrying over and like the bad puck luck is just like still a thing and um thank goodness that they kind of broke the seal there and were able to tie it um and like we we've talked about how this is a blue jackets team like we we understand this is a bad blue jackets team so winning four to three in overtime even if it is in electric fashion and we will get to our difference makers because it's pretty obvious who the two difference makers in this game are we'll probably get to that in segment two at this point because we've killed so much time we're just riffing right now but we understand that this is the blue jackets but you know i said it at the end of december and early january and i don't want to get ahead of myself right because they still that's one win after losing badly against Pittsburgh two in the last three, but you still have won what two games in the last 10, but I said it when the win streak started, they went out to California and they faced two ga- two teams in California that are really bad. And then the LA Kings who at the time were still technically good, but we're kind of starting to stumble. And I said, after going into the Anaheim game, the third of three, that if you win that game, the skit is over. And I said, it doesn't matter the fashion in which they win. The skit is over because they grinded out a win against a bad San Jose team. They played really well against, at the time, an LA Kings team that was starting to slide. And then they grinded out another win against the Anaheim Ducks. And you saw that that snowballed. So just as bad wins can snowball, and we've seen that, grinded out wins like this, even where you get outplayed dramatically in the first period and then play pretty good in the second and the third, at least on par with the blue jackets in the second and third getting the win can be a snowball effect positively. So going into the Islanders, which is a home game on Thursday, this momentum could carry. Now, if you would ask me if we hadn't had two games back to back on the weekend, we could have just recapped the Buffalo Sabres game. I probably would have said the same thing. So it's also not lost on me that they had an opportunity already to allow that momentum to carry, and they didn't. But I'm just saying that even though that this was a game against the Blue Jackets where you eked out a win, it can be the start of a of a winning stretch, not a winning streak, but a winning stretch with, what, now 13 games remaining and just, just hanging on to a wild card spot. Yeah, that, obviously that's the hope. The, the hope is that this translates into some sort of momentum. Kane said it in the post game presser uh, as well. Like the the hope is just that this can hopefully be some sort of you know momentum snowball effect going forward, and uh, then carry it into uh, 
into obviously Thursday, but then hopefully even beyond that. Absolutely. No, I'm getting greedy thinking that we might be able to win more than a game, but it <laughs> <laughs> is. Yeah. So, and I know this, it's just, it feels like a relief and hopefully that carries over in a Thursday for the, the boys. They feel like the curse is lifted and they can carry that into the, Oh, very important. Like, like I said, the season is safe for now. That Islanders game has so much carrying on it. Yeah, a lot. Like so much. So they have, that's a must win. And we'll preview that obviously tomorrow. But uh, we got to get to a break. When we come back, we'll give you our difference makers and our notable performers before uh, giving you these scores around the league to update you on the wild card race. Although kind of already did that. But anyways, stay tuned to segment two of Lockdown Red Wings. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning what scotty <laughs> rubber not cash love it with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Man, it's good to talk about a win. It just feels, this is what happiness feels like, Scotty. It's been, <laughs> been a long road. Because even the I'm, last win we got wasn't even really talking about it because it was uh, the weekend recap, right? So we, yeah. the most recent game was the loss. So we haven't <laughs> right. done like a, a pure, <laughs> just straight up win recap in March yet, have we? Right. It's nope. March 20th, and we haven't done like a, like a, a single game recap on a win literally in the month of March and crazy whiplash, like a week and a half left crazy whiplash from February and January. It was literally all victory recaps. Yeah, just good vibes. Right. Yeah. Big, um, big ones can make a lot of difference. Apparently. Anyway, Scotty, we got to do notable performers. We can't keep delaying the obvious. Uh, I'm going to let you go first and solely because they're, they're both very obvious and you can take one and I'll take the other. So who do you got? Yeah, thanks, man. I'll uh, I'll take Raymond. You can take Kane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucas Raymond, and, and this is one that really goes beyond this game as well. Obviously, this was a phenomenal performance by him, uh, but he, the entire time that Larkin has been out, seems to be the only person that has consistently been producing uh, and, and the only person that has been... He, he, I can't say enough good things, genuinely. Um, he, he's he been absolutely phenomenal. And in this game, we've been talking about it for a while, but his effectiveness as the bumper on the power play is remarkable. Like, he has been stellar, 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 stellar in that role. And, uh, and this game was really no different, but uh, was good in all facets. He had one shift. Was that in the second period? He had, like, the... The, the really, really ridiculous shift where he was, uh, he, he caused a turnover, was consistently, you know, buzzing in the offensive zone. The entire offense seemed to be kind of formed around him. Uh, th this was as good of a performance as you will see from Lucas Raymond. And uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't want to get like too carried away, but I think it might, might be one of the best, not in terms of maybe like box scores specifically, but uh, it might be some of the best he's looked in his entire career. Yeah. No. Uh, Without a doubt. I mean, we talked about it. This you're going to see with Larkin out who is going to step up to the plate and try and and be the guy for the Detroit Red Wings. Now, in the first few games, he was Larkin was out. Raymond didn't do a whole lot. I mean, you look, they so he Larkin got hurt at the end of the Panthers game. There was one, two, three games where Raymond had three total shots in that span and obviously no points. But since then, he has eight points in the last five games. Seven of those are goals. And, I mean, we talked about it, right, on the last episode or the last game recap, the weekend recap for Pittsburgh and Buffalo. He's really discovered his scoring his scoring touch. And yeah. it turns out all it took to discovering his scoring touch was for him to start shooting the puck. 
Like we already knew he was an electric playmaker, but we hadn't really gotten to witness his goal scoring capability. He's got a lethally accurate wrist wrister snapshot. And he's been bearing, I mean, four shots in this game, two goals, three shots against Pittsburgh, two goals, two shots against Buffalo, one goal, three shots against Arizona, one goal. Three shots well, against Buffalo, one goal. Like he he's has been really effective right in front of the net. Even like he's had two in that stretch that I think are right in front of the net, down on one knee, right? Just gets yeah. uh gets fed right in front of the net there. Um, uh, including this game, obviously. So yeah, man, he he's really carved out a, a role for himself. And uh Kane even joked about it in the presser. He was like, Yeah, man, he's been so good up the middle, uh, you know, in the center of the whole offense and in front of the net that. Uh, Kane joked with him that if you play too well, you're going to keep you there your whole career. So watch <laughs> out. But oh man, like that's uh, that he has really, really excelled yeah. in, in that role, and uh, I think really kind of finally putting to bed the you know is he undersized thing because that is is not a small man's role that he is filling, and he has absolutely excelled in it. He also sets a new career high in points with this game as well. Two goals to break his previous high. So he's at 59 points now in however many games played it is now for the Red Wings, like uh, 60, 60. This is the 69th game. So he's he's played all of them. So it's his uh, 59 points in 69 games for Lucas Raymond. I just, he's going to get paid. <laughs> he's going to get paid. And, and then and Mo both. Right. And deservedly so. And then obviously the other difference maker, Patrick Kane, who assisted on both of Lucas Raymond's goals. It's it's kind of crazy. I mean, so much of Lucas Raymond's production goal scoring is as a result of Patrick Kane's playmaking ability too. So you wonder why they don't pair those guys up on the same line more consistently. And I know they have tried. And so maybe they just hasn't worked out. I don't have a, the best memory. So maybe you guys can remind me in the comments what the results were when they're on the same line together. But obviously, he fed him on the power play. He got the secondary assist. Fabry fed him out front. And then with 12 seconds left, Kane got the primary assist, mainly because he shot the puck and Raymond buried the rebound. But then with the overtime goal, because who's more clutch in overtime than Patrick Kane? Kane's also riding a five-game point streak where I think he has six or seven points in that span. And that's another player who, and let's be honest, that was a player you expected to step up, but yeah. early on in the losing streak, he kind of went invisible, but now he and Raymond both are just turning into the two guys you can rely on to keeping the Red Wings in it. And in this case, winning it for the Detroit Red Wings. So, I mean, extend Patrick Kane, if he's willing, like I, I wow. said this like, weeks ago when the Red Wings, after I think it was the Blackhawks game, I was like, time to extend him, do it if you can. And if he's willing to stay here, because even at 35, well, that, he's one of the most <clears throat> dynamic players on forward. Yeah, that that's it's I I would love it if reality was it's just easy enough to just be like, hey, we want you around for a couple more years. Let's do it right now. But that's you know, he is playing really well. His market is obviously gonna determine a lot of that and uh or his value rather. And uh 18 and, minutes yeah, in, so. and I just noticed that I didn't have the proper background up, just updated for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Do we have yesterday's? <laughs> I had yesterday's up, so it was all negative on the today's show sheet. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off. What were you saying? No, that was pretty much the end of my thought. It was just, uh, you know, the the better he plays, the um, uh, I'm not, not the more unlikely. Certainly not what I mean. I, I think the Red Wings really want to keep Kane around, um, but uh, certainly the uh, the more negotiating that's going to have to go into said extension. Yeah, and so let's move on now. We got time for one notable performer for before getting into our second break. Um, we already mentioned Reimer as a notable performer for good and bad reasons. D pairs, I mean, the monkey paw kind of curled on us. We asked for their D shake up in the D pairs, and then Jake Wallman is day to day with a nagging injury. Which, let's be honest, like I I didn't say anything, and so people are gonna be like, oh, of course you're saying you noticed it now after not saying anything. But like after he sat for was a healthy scratch and had a maintenance day at practice, like I did wonder, like maybe there's something nagging him. And it felt like his skating was a little sluggish in the last few games, but I wasn't sure if that was because the team was sucking or if because he was hurt. So I wasn't too surprised when I saw that he was day to day with an injury. And so that meant Cider and Trot were your top pair. And that was the reason why Edvinson was called up to be paired with Jeff Petrie and then got Mata and Gossis pair stayed together. Cider and Trot looked good. And they, in fact, they were two of the top three players at Corsi 4% and Corsi 4% relative for the Detroit Red Wings. Cider actually 
led the team on the newly updated hockey stat cards that now take into account quality uh, of ice time and quality of competition. He was solidly in the positive. And they both, and Sider was one of two players that actually had a Corsi 4 percentage over 50% in this game, which in a game in which, which you got outshot heavily is kind of remarkable. I thought Sider and Schrott, with Schrott actually, let's say, again, admittedly having a bounce back season with despite how bad that pair of featuring Schrott can be. Yeah. I thought they looked good, and that was nice to see in a game where you really needed somebody to step up and play with Sider, who, by the way, got 24 minutes of ice time. I'm not saying Derek Lalonde listens to our podcast, <laughs> but I'm not not saying he does. Not not saying it. Um, yeah, great to see the uh, the ice time for Sider more than anything, honestly. But yeah, I thought that that pair, especially in the second and third, looked really good, uh, and that kind of naturally transitions us into you know how how Edvinson looked, and we can do that if you want after the break here. Yeah, that's what you call a tease. We'll we'll talk about Simon Edvinson coming up in segment three of Lockdown Red Wings. Nice job, Scotty. <laughs> Got to talk to you guys today about Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view in your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know exactly what you're getting before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concert, comedy, theater, hockey, so much more. And with zone, deal, zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for big time savings. And if you find a seat, in the same section and row for less, the game time guarantee means you'll get 110% of that difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app and create an account. Use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. God, I'm killing it today. <laughs> Segment three, locked on Red Wings. <laughs> I'm muted during those, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know I'm not. Uh, you, just, you just hear, good job, Brian. Good job. <laughs> pat myself on the back. Uh, listen, man, going to the finals with the men's league team, Red Wings, big win. The vibes are high. I'm going to be a dork. All right. It's just, it's it's unav unavoidable. It, yeah. The, the previous things that led up to that statement do not matter. in uh, <laughs> that's a <laughs> correlation and causation situation here. But uh, yes. False equivalency, as they say. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, before Simon Edmondson, one more thing about Cider, right? We talked about how good he was. Uh, he scored his eighth goal of the season. That's a new career high in goals for him. Of course, a little bit of puck luck, but also he made it's It's going to go unnoticed. But if you go back and watch the overtime goal by, Patrick Kane, Lucas or Moritz Sider ran interference as Patrick Kane yeah. broke down the wing. A Columbus Blue Jacket tried to cut across, and Sider very nonchalantly got in the lane and went like yeah. this to play interference. And those little things are what result in a winner. So, power play one for him, a goal, and on the overtime playing interference, leading to Patrick Kane's goal. So, Sider was great in that game. Just want to reiterate. Uh, now, Simon Edvinson playing on a pair with Jeff Petrie. Edvinson played big minutes in this game, and I love that. He played 18 minutes. I think it was a third or Absolutely love it. I, I mean, it was necessary. He was playing penalty kill as well on a penalty kill that was successfully killed off, I might add. Love so it. I know that his numbers are going to rank him second to last in Corsi 4 percentage. But I got to I gotta say, and granted, I missed a large chunk of the third period because of my own men's league game. So maybe there was something that happened in the third period that I didn't see, no, but I, outside I of he looked bad at all outside of one bad giveaway in the first period, he was making good plays in the defensive zone. He was winning board battles and getting the puck up ice. I liked what I saw to Simon Edison, and I hope that he stays on the team when Jake Wallman's healthy. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, certainly. I mean, we've been, again, we've been, <laughs> clamoring for that for a while now obviously but yeah I, I didn't think he looked out of place out there at all obviously there's a little bit of adjustment period that's going to come along with it but I think he can absolutely help this team going forward and be a part of the playoff push and and uh and be a really effective member and an addition of this blue line he has he, he has intangibles man right like he he has stuff that uh 
it's hard to teach and, and sometimes even hard to see. But uh, yeah, I absolutely have. I don't have any issue with what I saw out of him in this game. I think uh, him and Petrie is a is a interesting duo. I don't know if that's going to be the guaranteed, you know, the place where he slides in the rest of the year. But um, I, I hope that he continues to get playing time even when Wallman is back. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I liked what I saw for the most part. I want to see him get more reps. Obviously, he's a rookie, so you expect it to not be a necessarily smooth transition, but I love the fact that he immediately gave him big minutes. And when Wolman comes back, you know, I'd be really curious because I think there's a lot of interesting matchups, obviously him being a left-side defenseman, but Sherratt, Gostas, Bear, Petrie, Hole, Cider, of course, all play yeah. right side. You have a lot of potential matchups to try and try out. Edvinson, and I think that he has a lot of potential to contribute to this team down the stretch. Uh, also, Austin Zarnick, 1C. Yeah. Like, we talked about period, it a little bit earlier already, but yeah, man. I just wanted to reiterate because that's crazy. And what was crazier was how freaking good he looked between Patrick Kane and Alex to bring it. They played nine minutes at five on five. After an egregious first, he took over the, the role of center between those two. <laughs> A guy, like I said earlier, played was playing top line with Berger and Grand Rapids a week ago to be on a, a centering those two and then have a 70% Corsi 4 percentage as a line and an 80% expected goals 4 percentage as a line in nine minutes of five on five hockey. Like, I love Zarnik already. I have a soft spot for those kind of underdog type players. You're great, your heart and your hustle, not a lot of skill, but he was, he, he looks good in the other games too. But he flies, he hustles. And yeah, like, that's the type of guy you need to feed a slow and old Patrick Kane who still has his playmaking touch and an Alex to bring it, who in theory is your finisher. And of course, we all know has had four. Yeah, yeah. We can talk about that later. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I, um, I think sometimes even he got a little too, like, I have to get the puck to Patrick Kane right now, right? Like, he had a couple of turnovers that way, he had a couple of giveaways, just, like, he tried one completely, like, cross ice through four people, like, pass, just to, like, you know, get it to Kane, or, and and I think that, uh, that that's probably, you know, just, uh, I don't know, there's probably some jitters playing with Patrick Kane, <laughs> like, right after you get called up. I'd imagine, but yeah, man, we've talked about it a lot. Like he's been skating really well since getting the call up. Um, has looked really good. Yeah, I. Uh, it's like like we talked about earlier that those lines got completely put in a blender in that after that abysmal first period, and that was one of the combinations that came out on the other side, and it didn't look it, half bad. It worked, and you know, we if it works, you don't mess with it. They had twelve shot attempts for, and only five shot attempts against. Like what? Okay. <laughs> we we absolutely take that. Uh, the last thing I got as far as the Detroit Red Wings game goes, actually, I think that might have been it. I think that covered it. I'm trying to think. Shout out Michael Rasmussen, by the way, not for his play, but for the fact that in the game against Pittsburgh and then with another assist in this game, he set a new career high in points himself. Uh, I just want to give I, yeah, I think he, he had a roller coaster of a game. So, yeah. <laughs> And it would be great if – Dylan Larkin could be back on Thursday, but I know Lalone said it would be aggressive to assume he could return against the Islanders. But man, what a game would it be for him to return to? Yes. He'll get a full I, practice on Wednesday, though, they said. Yeah, then that and that's gonna be the the gauge. Obviously, that'll be the the test. So we'll see. But I mean, as far as this game goes, I think we've covered all the most notable points. I think that's everything we wanted to cover. Yeah, uh, and then just a quick look around the league at what's going on right now. Uh, the Sabres are losing to the Canucks as of recording this, 2 to nothing at the end of the second period. The Lightning and the Golden Knights are tied 2-2 two to two at the end of the second period, both those games out west, obviously. Uh, then you have the, this one doesn't matter for standings, but the Bruins beat the Senators 6-2. to two. The Devils beat the Penguins 5-2, to two, which is probably the better of the two outcomes. Well, I was happy with just a regulation one, but with the Devils behind the Penguins, having yeah. them fight for points and the Devils catch up the Penguins, Penguins is probably better. Flyers did beat the Maple Leafs, which is actually a bad thing because we want the Flyers to lose so that if either Washington or the Islanders jump up into a wild card spot, it, it, they immediately jump into the uh, Metropolitan third right. division spot. But the Islanders, the biggest one, Islanders lost four to one to the Hurricanes. So you add a little bit of separation 
in that regard. So taking a look at the standings, uh, it's Tampa Bay in the first wild card spot with 78 points. Red Wings now just two points back. Of course, that's subject to change with the Lightning possibly winning or losing. Uh, you'll find out by the time most of you guys are recording this. Capitals one point behind the Red Wings for that final wild card spot with two games in hand. And the Islanders one game in hand against the Red Wings, three points back, and it goes down from there. Hanging on, but again, Thursdays might be a make or break moment for the the season. And we just got to hope that they can carry this momentum in to a home ice game against a team that's battling with you. Please, P- please, please, please. We'll preview that one tomorrow, obviously. But yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Scotty, do you have any final thoughts for the people? I don't think so, man. We ball. We ball. Please stop giving up breakaways. We'll be back with a new episode tomorrow. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. Every day.